What's up everyone, I'm Chirag and welcome to part 20 of the tutorial series on Amazon HTTP API. In this video, I will take you through how to serve request originating from specific IP addresses within HTTP API and deny serving the request originating from IP addresses other than the ones which are whitelisted. So unlike REST API, we do not have an option of resource policy to restrict the API from entertaining the request from baddies and only entertain the request which is originating from the whitelisted IP addresses as a part of the resource policy. So how do we achieve this within HTTP API? So within HTTP API, we can control the whitelisting of IP addresses via Lambda Authorizer in conjunction with simple or IAM policy response mode. So guys, as a part of this video, we will look at the setup of how we can enable HTTP API to entertain request based on the origin. So here as a part of this video, we are going to create two Lambda function, one for the backend integration and one for Lambda authorization. And then we are going to create the HTTP API followed by the creation of the route and its respective uh, method. And then finally, we are going to attach the Lambda function that is one for backend integration and one for the Lambda authorization. So let's get started with the hands-on implementation of the same. So let's navigate to the AWS management console. Now once you are within AWS management console, let's navigate to the Lambda management console since we want to create a two Lambda functions, one for the backend integration and one for the Lambda authorization. Once you are within Lambda management console, click on functions from the left panel and then click on create function from the top right corner. Here we are going to create the Lambda function for the backend integration. So here we need to fill in few details like function name and then selecting the runtime. So I will enter function name as Lambda backend. I will select runtime as Python 3.9 and I will leave rest of the option as it is and then click on create function. So here we have successfully created the backend integration function that is Lambda backend. Now here as a part of the source code, I will simply replace this uh, return statement that is hello from Lambda with successful invocation. Okay, and then I'm going to save this and click on deploy. Now the next step, we are going to create another Lambda function. So let's go back to the Lambda management console and click on create function. Again, we need to fill in these details like function name and selecting the runtime. So let's do that. So here I will enter Lambda auth as a function name and I will select runtime as Python 3.9. And then again, I'm going to leave rest of the option as it is. Finally, click on create function. Now here we have successfully created the Lambda authorizer function. Now as a next step, we need to update the source code of this Lambda function to basically add the functionality of whitelisting the IP address and also validating the IP address from which the request is originating, right? So now uh, for the Lambda authorizer code part, I have already pushed the code on this GitHub repository that is AWS tutorial code. And I will also paste the link of this code in the video description so you can reuse this. So now let me copy this. And let's go back to the Lambda authorizer and paste it over here. And then I will say deploy. Now as the next step, we need to configure or add the environment variable. And the environment variable that we need to add is IP range. Okay, so I'm going to copy this and click on configuration. Click on environment variables from the left panel and click on edit. Click on edit environment variable. And as a part of the key, we will say IP underscore range and within value we need to define or provide the list of uh, IP addresses that we want to whitelist. So here I will simply enter as of now 0 .0 0.0.0.0. So here I'm saying that I only want to entertain the request that is originating from 0, .0, .0, 0.0.0.0 and then I will click on save. Now here within this lambda function or the lambda authorizer there are two things happening. The first thing is that we are going to validate the authorization token. If the authorization token is valid, then we are going to return the IAM policy. And this IAM policy defines that we want to allow execute API operation on this particular resource that is mentioned over here. And apart from authorization token validation, we are also looking forward for the validation of the IP addresses that from which IP address the request is originating, right? So here I have this helper function that is check underscore IP where I am leveraging the IP address module that comes inbuilt as a part of the Python environment. Now here within the check underscore IP method, we are validating if the origin IP address is whitelisted or not as a part of the IP underscore range environment variable. Now on line number 18, we are fetching the list of CIDR blocks from the IP underscore range environment variable, if any. 
and if there is any CIDR block then we will check if the originating IP address falls under the CIDR range or not and if the originating IP address falls under the defined CIDR range then we will set valid underscore IP as true and then we will return the same and finally on line 25 we will simply check if originating IP address exists in the IP range or not if it exists then it will return true else it will return false okay so here uh, again on line 41 we are checking for the authorization token and then uh, we are also checking for if the origin IP address is valid or not if we want to serve that IP address or not. And then finally uh, we have the by default deny IAM policy. So if the execution flow does not go under this if statement then we are going to simply uh, deny that uh, request right we are not going to entertain that request. So this is our Lambda authorizer and apart from that if you want to understand that how I have come up with this IAM policy and how I have decided to you know validate this authorization token then you can refer my existing tutorials on as you can see on my screen here I have this tutorial on Lambda authorizer with simple response mode and then Lambda authorizer with IAM policy response mode. And then uh, if you want to kind of uh, manually validate the JWT token as a part of the Lambda authorizer, then you can refer this uh, video as well, right? So I will post the link of this playlist in the uh, video description. So if you want to learn more about it, then you can go through uh, this tutorial series. Okay, right, sure. now as a next step, we are going to create the HTTP API. So let's go back to AWS Management Console and search for API. And click on Create API. Now here since we want to uh, build the HTTP API so we are going to select the first option and click on build. Now here we need to provide the name of the API so I will simply say whitelist API and then I will say review and create. I will say create again. Now here we have successfully created or built the API. Now let's click on routes from the left panel and say create route. Here I will select get method and here we need to define the name of the route so I will simply say test. And then click on create now here uh, we have the resource that is slash test and the respective method uh, that is attached with that particular resource is the get method so let's click on this get now here as soon as you click on get here on the right side you will get two options that is for authorization and the integration so let's click on attach integration first and then click on create and attach an integration within integration type we will select lambda function and here we are going to select the lambda function that we have initially created so in my case it should be lambda backend so select that and click on create now here we have successfully attached the uh, lambda function as a part of the backend integration for this get method now click on routes from the left panel again and click on this get method and say attach authorization now here uh, we don't have any existing authorization except the IAM that comes built in. So we are going to click on create and attach an authorizer. Now here within authorizer type select the lambda function. And here we need to provide the authorization name. So I will simply say whitelist. And then we need to select the lambda function. So in this case we are going to select the uh, second lambda function that we have created. So that's lambda hyphen auth in my case. Within payload format version we will select 2.0 and then here we need to select the response mode so here I will go with the IAM policy and finally here we need to define the identity sources that how we are going to pass the authorization token and so here I will simply say authorization token and this is something that we are going to pass it as a part of the headers while invoking the API endpoint and finally click on create and attach. Now here we have successfully configured uh, both the lambda functions successfully configured the environment variables followed by the creation of the HTTP API and then we created the routes followed by the get method and then uh, we attach the backend integration as well as the uh, authorizer to that particular method. Now we are good to test this functionality. Okay so let's click on stages. So here by default we will have the default stage and for this stage the automatic deployment is enabled. So whatever we have configured or created as a part of this HTTP API is already deployed. So let me copy this invocation URL and open Postman and paste it over here. Now here I need to add the resource that I want to invoke. So in my case it's slash test. Okay and then I'm going to click on headers and as a part of the headers I'm going to pass the authorization token. 
and the value of the authorization token would be let's pass the correct value so here i have defined the static value for the purpose of this tutorial that is secret code and i'm going to paste it over here but before i go ahead and click on send button and invoke this api endpoint let's go back to the lambda authorizer and as a part of the code let's print event over here and then i will say deploy now we are good to invoke this api endpoint so let's click on send now here as you can see it returned 403 forbidden and with the message forbidden right so let's go back to the lambda authorizer and click on monitor and say view logs in cloudwatch so here we have the invocation log so let's open this now here as you can see we have printed the event so here uh, we will be able to see the identity source and the secret code so that's correct right and if we look at the source ip then here we have the source ip that is 103.137.12.30 okay that means uh, the, the IP that we have whitelisted is 0.0.0, .0 right? So that's the reason it returned the response that is 403 forbidden. Okay, now let's go back to the Lambda authorizer and click on configuration and click on environment variables. And then we are going to click on add it. Now as a second value, let's add that source IP address. So I'm going to copy this and paste it over here. Say save. Now what we just did is that we just whitelisted this IP address. Now let's go back to the postman and click on send. Now as you can see it returns status code 200 with the message that is successful invocation. So this is how uh, we can whitelist the IP addresses using Lambda authorizer. And apart from this individual IP addresses, you can also define or add in the CIDR block if you want to whitelist the range of the IP addresses. And that functionality is already being handled as a part of this uh, check IP function uh, that I have written over here. So guys, this is how you can whitelist the IP addresses and the range of IP addresses using Lambda authorizer within HTTP API. Apart from that, if you are already using Lambda authorizers, then you can add the IP validation logic easily. Right. But if you are simply adding the Lambda authorizers for validating the request origin or the IP addresses, then it will add additional cost uh, with added Lambda limitations. So here I will recommend or suggest to choose wisely that if you want to go with this uh, methodology or not. So guys, that's all I wanted to cover as a part of this video. Until that time, if you want me to do a tutorial on any use case or service, then please leave them below and I will try my best to come up with the tutorial as soon as possible. And if you have any queries or comments then again please leave them below and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel and see you next time.